pickaxe. When difficult thoughts have taken root in your mind and overgrown, how can we prune them back and allow happy and calm thoughts to grow there instead? And possibly some potatoes. Welcome to Mindfulness for Gamers. Hello my friend, hope you're happy, hope you're peaceful, it's your old pal Sean. If you're enjoying the podcast, then I invite you to become a supporter of the show on Patreon. The link is in the description, there's lots of exclusive content there, including guided meditations to help you sleep. Please do check it out, and please do subscribe and leave a review if you're enjoying the podcast. Anything you can do to spread the word helps. Shout out to the Good Pods app, listen to your favourite shows, follow friends to see what they listen to, Share podcast recommendations and find new podcasts that haven't hit your radar yet. The link is in the description. A lot of new games over the last 15 years have consciously taken their foot off the gas. Rather than being an adrenaline fueled roller coaster ride through a hellscape with a grenade launcher in your hand, they take a more serene, even mundane approach. The market for games of the ordinary has grown surprisingly fast, giving rise to all sorts of reflections of real life. You can sit in a lorry or truck and drive cargo across Poland. You can become a goat or a cat, or if you're in a particularly malicious mood, a goose. If you're really craving a taste of the ordinary, you can jump into Death Stranding, which is the walking simulator. You can test your relationship with your loved ones to the limit by opening a restaurant with them and cook, serve, delicious. And you can be a Soviet border agent in the excellent Papers, Please. And if you want to try a variety of jobs, you can always go for Job Simulator. Set in the year 2050, you experience everyday jobs like working in an office or a shop as a kind of museum attraction because all jobs have been taken over by artificial intelligence. Luckily, that's a highly unrealistic scenario, and we're all safe in our jobs, for now at least. Uh, Sorry, bear with me for a second. I've just got a message from my producer, Al. Uh, Please note that my responses are based on the information available to me and may not be accurate or up-to-date. I feel like Al is getting less and less coherent, but anyway, the point is, the king of of slice-of-life games over the last few years has got to be Stardew Valley, a game where you throw off the boring grind of a safe, secure office job with good pay and benefits to go and do back-breaking labour on a tiny farm. My real life actually ran in the opposite direction. I grew up on a farm and ended up working in an office, and I have to say, a nice warm cubicle beats cleaning up sheep poo any day of the week. You have lots of different objectives in the game. You can dig mines and battle monsters, like in Minecraft. You can go fishing. You can collect secret items. As you would expect in a game like this, socialising is sadly also one of the objectives. As someone who has tended to play video games to avoid interactions with people, this seems like a slightly unfair game mechanic, but you have the optional mission, should you choose to accept it, to make friends with people. This game is impossible. But of course, the main objective is to grow stuff and to make that sweet, sweet gold. When you arrive at the farm, it's in a complete mess, thanks Grandpa, and you have to spend quite a bit of time digging out rocks, chopping trees, and hacking at weeds to get it in shape. Then you use your hoe, the least funny of all of the garden implements, to till the land, plant the seed. I bought seed potatoes. I just like potatoes for no particular reason. And then give them the water and the sunlight they need to grow. With the right guidance, diligent attention and good effort, you can grow a beautiful garden of flowers, crops and animals. And we can do the same with our thoughts. It sometimes doesn't feel like that. It can feel like our thoughts just happen and we have no control. There's nothing we can do to stop them from overwhelming us. Our mind can feel like our farm when we arrive in Stardew Valley, cluttered, overgrown. Maybe you even think that your mind is a mess. But we can cultivate a happy, calm mind with the right guidance, diligent attention and good effort. Even in very difficult circumstances, what grows in our mind depends on the seeds that we choose to water. Meaning that how we react to our current experience, including the thoughts that arise, 
will define whether we're walking the path of happiness or the path of suffering. The challenge is that while our mind is a really powerful instrument for creativity, problem solving and imagining what your dog is thinking, it can also become a a double-edged sword if we cling on to our difficult thoughts, dwelling on past regrets or anxiously anticipating the future, we can allow the brambles to take root in our farm. That constant chatter in our mind stresses us out to the point where we wish we could turn it off. When I was younger and struggled with my mental health, all I wanted was an off switch for my difficult thoughts. So we look around for that off switch and we turn to whatever form of consumption gives us that temporary relief, be it binge watching TV shows, maybe it's alcohol, or it might be a vegetarian pepperoni barbecue pizza with potato wedges. That's a completely random example. But whatever mammoth we ride in the overconsumption rodeo, these habits are just distractions. They give us what feels like a little bit of release from our difficult thoughts, but it's kind of like throwing an ice cube in a volcano. And that's why meditation and mindfulness freak some people out. We've mastered the art of avoiding our thoughts so much that embracing them, listening to them, accepting them seems impossible, ridiculous even. We've become passengers in our own lives. Our mind has the controller and we're its little brother, holding the second controller which isn't even plugged in, pretending like we're in control. And the mind is not a fun big brother to have. We end up letting it run the show when really it should be our tool, not our tyrant. But we can cultivate a happy, calm mind with the right approach. Step one is to see thoughts for what they are. Thoughts aren't reality and thoughts aren't you. They don't necessarily reflect who you are and they don't define you. Thoughts are just passing events that arise in your mind. Nothing more than that. By taking a step back and separating yourself from them, and more importantly, separating yourself from your mind, you can see that you are an awareness that experiences your thoughts and directs your mind. Seeing the true nature of that relationship hugely reduces the power of the mind to control how you feel. And that's because we can now observe our thoughts with a non-judgmental, curious attitude rather than being caught up in what they have to say or swept away by the intensity of them. It's a bit like being in spectator mode rather than being a player. You can still see what's happening, but you're not necessarily affected by it. Rather than being afraid of having anxious thoughts or sad thoughts, we can just watch them, knowing that they don't have power over us knowing that they don't reflect reality. It's also hugely important to look deeply into the thoughts as they arise. Every time we have a difficult thought, it's a great opportunity for us to gain insight into our suffering. So rather than letting it pass unchallenged, which is what we tend to do normally, even if we're not fully aware of it, we can observe it with curiosity. Instead of being fearful of it, we can look into the roots of it, What was the painful experience we went through that leads to us having the difficult thought now? And we can feel some understanding and compassion for ourselves as a result. Ultimately, what we want to be able to do is to sit and watch our thoughts without having a reaction, without being afraid or frustrated, watching them grow like flowers in a garden, observing them for what they are and accepting even difficult ones with calmness and composure. We don't allow our difficult thoughts to sweep us away or unbalance us. Like growing a successful farm, it's not easy. It takes practice and persistence, but I can tell you that it's well worth it. So let's practice that right now with a guided meditation on our thoughts. I'm going to start with three sounds of the bell and the usual settling in introduction.
And we'll start as we always do, by applying our beginner's mind to our posture. So I would invite you to imagine that you have a thread attached to the crown of your head. And it's gently pulling you upwards into an upright position. Your spine like a stack of coins. Your heart raised upwards and outwards. Your hands comfortably in your lap. And just allowing a gentle smile to emerge on your face as we enjoy the stability of our posture. And expanding that spotlight of awareness to your entire body, noticing where you feel warm or cold, noticing where you feel tense or relaxed, Becoming aware of the sensation of the clothes against your skin. And the points of contact between your body and the chair and the floor. And shifting that spotlight of awareness to your thoughts and feelings. And as we go through the gated meditation, just noticing each thought arising, and that might be an anxious thought about tomorrow. It could be a happy thought about today, or a sad thought about yesterday. Just sitting with each thought for a moment, allowing it to leave, and then gently, without judgment, bringing your attention back to your breath. And finally, focusing your awareness on your breath, noticing that column of air between your nose and your diaphragm. Noticing how the air feels cooler on the way in. Warmer on the way out. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In, out. Breathing in, 
I see my mind as a sky. Breathing out, I see thoughts passing like clouds across the sky. Mind as a sky, thoughts passing. Breathing in, I see a thought arising. Breathing out, I smile to the thought arising. Thought arising, smiling. Breathing in, I accept the thought without agreeing or disagreeing with it. Breathing out, I smile to the thought, accepting the thought, smiling.
breathing in, I notice the thought passing across the sky. Breathing out, I smile to the thought passing over the horizon. Across the sky, over the horizon. As we reach the end of the guided meditation, just taking a moment or two to notice any changes in your body, any areas of relaxation, any areas of discomfort or tension. Just taking a moment to stretch those if you need to. Noticing any changes in your mind, and if you feel a sense of calm or peace, then I would invite you to carry that through the rest of your day. And finally, opening your eyes and returning your awareness to the room that you're in. And if you've enjoyed this episode, then please uh, consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon, where you can access exclusive content and episodes. And if you'd like more content for free, then you can listen to my other podcast, Mindfulness for Beginners, which is available on most, if not all, podcast platforms. Uh, The link for both is in the description. And may you be happy, may you be peaceful, and may your adventures be joyful. Slana will you, and I'll see you next time.